Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, before, I know some people probably won't watch the video, but I was doing, I'm still working on the study about King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and I am um, took a break and I started looking at some of the David Daniels fails the spirit of Antichrist uh, test. I started looking at some of the comments and someone sent me a link. Um, not me personally, but under the comments made some links and stuff like that. So before we get started on this, I want to say this. Has come versus is come is a, and 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 and 3 is a very serious issue. Is come is always present tense. Has come is always past tense. It's never present. It's never future. It's always past tense. Now, before we get in here, I want people to know I don't hate David Daniels. I don't hate Chick Publications. I don't have this anger where, you know, I just have this vendetta or something against them. Okay. Our problem, brothers and sisters in Christ, my problem being in ministry is anytime I point someone towards David Daniels and he's getting off on some serious errors, okay. Uh, Brother JT over at Sinners to Repentance did a video showing how some of his trick tacks are going to easy prayerism. But it's not pushing repentance, okay? And he's starting to go in a direction that doesn't line up with the scriptures. And for what we're talking about today is come versus has come. I've got a lot of his books, Brothers and Sisters in Christ. I've been a big supporter of um, Chick Publications. And just because he's wrong here doesn't mean he's wrong in these books over here. Okay, look what's missing. Uh, Mystery Babylon. Okay, 50 Years in the Church of Rome. I mean, I don't know if he, all these are his, but some of these are his. Okay, um, I'm not saying he's wrong on everything he does. Just because he's wrong on one thing doesn't mean he's wrong on everything. But this stuff is serious. How can I point people to this? without them coming across this. I'm pointing at my notes and everything. Has come in the flesh. It's no big deal. Is come, has come. It's, they both mean the same thing. Okay. How can we do that? I will not point a babe in Christ to this stuff at this time. Okay. I'll make sure I'll point him to this. I'll point him to Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries that aren't making the errors that David Daniels is. Okay. Once they've got meat... And they're getting onto the meat along with the milk, as the Bible talks about. Uh, I'll start pointing them to some of this stuff. Okay? Because it's good information. It's truth. I believe it's truth. Okay? David Daniels was about truth when it comes to these books. It's a different subject. This is the subject that's important. Okay? We're, I'm doing this video out of love for David Daniels. True love is preaching truth. True love for a brother in Christ is correcting them when they need to be corrected. Helping them get back on the right path. Okay, So, uh, Brother uh, Brian, he did a video, and I'll, I'll say this real quick, because I read some of the comments. Actually, I read all the comments under his videos, and one of the things when I talked to people under there was they didn't know, and I'm going to go over my conversation with David Daniels, um, more than two people okay, that I know of and can prove, uh, and the link, and I'll do the link, I'll link Brother Brian's video, I'll link Brother Matthew Landall's, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, video, he shows that he talked to David Daniels, that's one witness, I'm going to show you I talked to David Daniels, there's two witnesses, the Bible says before two or three witnesses, let every word, all, every word be established, I'm going to look that up now, <laughs> I want to make sure because that's very important, for, let's see, There it is, 1 Timothy 5.19, uh, against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Okay. Uh, Deuteronomy 17.6 says, at the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of, okay, that's a different one, worthy of death be put to death. David Daniels isn't worthy of death, don't, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, there it is, Matthew 18.16, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established okay it's very hard today we can do Skype and whatnot but more than two 
witnesses, a lot of people other than Matthew Landall and myself, has confronted him on things, okay? Um, if you watch some of my videos in the past, I confronted David Daniels on graven images. His chick tracks have graven images. His uh, comic book collection that I have up here, um, I finally got convicted and had to throw some of them out because they had graven images in it. Okay? And I showed him through scripture that we're not to have it. But he wouldn't listen. Okay? Uh, J, Brother JT. Other people have gone to him about some of his trick tracks where he's leaning towards easy believism. So I'm kind of going too far. But the point is, brothers and sisters in Christ, some of the people making the comment in there when I told him, hey, more than one brother has gone to him to talk to him about this. It's not that we're just jumping the gun and going straight to video. To me, it's not about views. Me doing this video, I have no doubt I'm going to lose subscribers. When I did this Christmas study, I lost a lot of subscribers because people wanted their flesh holiday over doing things God's way. Okay, I'm going to preach the truth to you because I love you. That's true love for a brother and sisters in Christ. That's true love for the lost world. You preach the true gospel and you preach truth. They're sinners on their way to hell. And, they're gonna, and they deserve to go to hell for sinning against God, and God provided a way out of hell. You're sick, and you need a cure. Okay, That's preaching truth. I've had people, family members that profess to be saved, tell me that I should never preach about hell Okay, when you're preaching the gospel. You shouldn't tell people about hell. Okay, True love is preaching the truth, and that's what I want to do here. Okay? So we're going to get to a Bible study at the end. So please, I hope some people bear with me. First, I'm going to talk about the David Daniels. And then we're going to get to a Bible study. And I'm going to answer some of the questions that were brought up on Brother Brian's channel. Okay? There's people asking questions about other passages that says, um, hath come or was manifest past tense in the flesh. And we're going to talk about that. But um, right now, David Daniels, I'll put the link to his page that he puts up. Okay. And he says, I, David W. Daniels, confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Please don't believe any slander or libel, I think that's libel, that says I don't. God bless you all. Then underneath that he says, I had an unusual exchange with someone on Friday. I'll put the conversation here for all to see. If I did something wrong, please let someone show me so I can make it right. Thanks. And he shows the conversation he had with Brother Matthew Landell. Okay. Um, hopefully that's not getting into the volume, but it's raining uh, right now. So I read that and I'm like, okay, he's confessing. Now people attacked me when I did the video. When I confessed that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, I also did a little bit of a Bible study explaining that confessions come from the heart. And it's backed by action. It's not just words. Anybody can say, I confess. But does your actions back it up? The okay. Bible talks about obeying the gospel. Okay. Obeying the gospel, the lost world doesn't obey the gospel. Okay. We do. What, what's the evidence of that? A changed life. Okay. There's always action for evidence. That, you know, when you say, I believe something, I believe this is God's perfect written word, the King James Bible. How do you know that I believe it? That's what I teach. This is absolute truth. This is the foundation of my life in all matters of faith and practice. That's the evidence. It's not just my words. I have evidence to back it up. Okay. So he puts this out, and um, we'll come back to this. Remember he says, I confess. It comes from the heart. So we're going to talk about the conversation I had with David Daniels, because I'm a second witness. Okay. Now, I will show pictures at the end. I couldn't get the program to work where it just kicks me out. After the video is done recording, it kicks me out. And I still haven't been able to fix it where you can watch me go online and show you stuff and everything. I miss it, but I still haven't been able to get it to work. Uh, a brother in Christ that might know something about computers, maybe I can get with you and you can help me figure out why the error keeps occurring. Um, and it kicks me out. But... I will show the pictures of the comments when I was talking to him on Facebook. Now, when I confronted him, it had nothing to do with what Brent, um, it ha has to do with the same subject. But Brother Matthew Landall was talking about one of his teachings that was recorded of him in front of a church, uh, in a church building, 
it's not a church building, it's a temple, um, but that's a whole nother thing. My thing was, is I wanted to get the Spanish translation that Chick Publication did, because I wanted, I, there's some, I have Span, Spanish in the community around here. I wanted to get, you know, a few of those Bibles, so when I have someone who's truly interested saying, yeah, I want the King James Bible, but I can hardly read English, or I have family members that don't read English, I could give them a Spanish translation. But I had some brothers in Christ that do speak Spanish on, um, under some of my channels tell me, you don't want that Bible. And I said, well, why? It's Chick Publications. David Daniels is a King James Bible believer, and he knows a lot about translations. And they told me that in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 and 3, in that Spanish translation, it translates as has come in the flesh. It's a past tense translation. It's not present tense. And I was like, well, let's go to the source. So I went to David Daniels to ask him if that's true. That's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start reading the conversation and talking between. I was going to get the Spanish Bible from Chick Publication. I was told that in 1 John 4, it's supposed to be 1 and 3 or 2 and 3, in translation to Jesus Christ, it's translated to Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Is this true? I'm not attacking him or nothing. I'm just asking a question. I want to make sure that I wasn't told a lie. Here's his response. It's a perfect, and I had to look up, but we'll talk about that, perfect. He's going off English, I'll do it now. English language, a perfect, I still don't understand it fully because I don't go off the English of today of how things are supposed to be done and what's acceptable and what's not. Because English, I'll go over this real quick, English, is supposed to be an ever evolving language. It's ever changing, evolving to be perfect. And when you actually look into it, high school English, when I went to a Bible college before I joined the military, I went in there and I flunked English <laughs> first semester. And I taught, I said, I'm doing everything right according to what they taught me in high school. And it was now wrong, a lot of it. I went, I got talked into going back to college for a semester. Um, before I moved out here, it was about a uh, year after I got saved, and I took an English class, and I talked to the professor, and I'm like, wait a second, this stuff that you're telling us, that we can, the, the way we're supposed to do it, in the past, I was taught that that's wrong. And they keep back and forth, back and forth, and now this is okay, now it's not okay, now this is the way we do things, we're not going to do things the way we used to. And you know what I've learned since I got saved in all of my studies of the King James Bible? The English language that's evolving is all about attacking the Word of God. I cannot paste, um, uh, copy and paste the King James Bible onto my Word document when I'm making notes for my teachings and everything without that grammar check just attacking that word left and right. You know, these words should be together. They should be separate. You needed to have a comma here. You needed this here. And there's a phrase there because I got a new program that uh, my brother, blood brother, <laughs> helped install that has to do with grammar. So when you say one thing, it's supposed to be like to this instead of this. You left out a word. It's really attacking the King James Bible, saying it's just so wrong in how it's read and written and everything. Yeah, I think that's purposely done. So when he's bringing up it's a per perfect, I'm like, I'm going to go off with the Bible. And we're going to do a study because you compare the Scripture with Scripture and it will define how something's used, okay, and why it's used the way it's used. Okay? I don't need to go to present day English and what's acceptable and what's not. So... We're going to keep going. Is there something wrong with that in Spanish? Question mark. In English, we were able to say is come to translate a perfect. Does Spanish mean the same thing either with seer or ishtar? So what I got from that is he was confirming, yes, it's past tense. But what's the big deal? We're able to say is come in English, but in Spanish, we can say it has come. A past tense. You can do a present tense but they chose a past tense. Okay. Now, I responded with, is come in the flesh is what you say about somebody who is still alive. It's an antichrist challenge. If you deny that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, anywhere in time, whether you're in the Old Testament, 
present day or future, you can say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And we'll get to this in a little bit, but is come is eternal in the sense that it's present tense all the time. Okay? It's always present tense. It's never past tense. It's never future tense. It is present tense. Okay? That's why I use the word eternal. That's why God chose that to be in 1 John chapter 4. Because Jesus is eternal. He is God fully and completely. The Bible perversions changed is come in the flesh to has come in the flesh. Saying has come in the flesh, I put cruise, <laughs> and I'll correct myself, it's supposed to be proves that the Bible, these Bible perversions are part of the Antichrist spirit, their satanic Bibles. And then I put on there not cruise, but proves, because I was typing. Um, sometimes you can type fast and, and put in the wrong word. But these Bible perversions that he's against, that's one of the big evidences that this is, uh, this is the true word of God. And uh, I don't know if I have right here. I don't know if they show up. Yeah. This whole row right here is Bible perversions. They're Antichrist Bibles. They're Satanic Bibles. And some of them uh, I put there temporarily until I threw them away because they're supposed to be King James Bibles, but they had um, Satanic uh, imagery and everything in them, and I've had to throw them away. But those are satanic Bibles that uh, David Daniels is against. So I'm trying to refresh his mind. I'm not attacking him. I'm saying that's why these are Bible perversions. They're satanic Bibles. Uh, at any given point in time, if you say Jesus has come in the flesh, you're saying he's not God. It's past tense. And we're going to get to some of the verses that they brought up about where it uses past tense and some other verses about Jesus Christ in the flesh. And we're going to talk about that. But in this verse, we're talking about 1 John chapter 4. We're not talking about any of the other verses in the Bible. This is talking about Jesus Christ as an eternal being, if you want to use the word being. He's an eternal person. I have no problem using person for Jesus Christ because he is a person. God the Father is not and neither is the Holy Spirit. But Jesus Christ is a person. He's eternal. Okay. Is come in the flesh and has come in the flesh are two different things. One word changes, change to mess the whole passage up. And I threw that in there and I could be a little bit more descriptive like I'm talking to you now because now I'm talking to you after the fact and explaining this. But I threw that in there and the reason I did that was because I remember one of Brother Brian, uh, Brother Brian, uh, Brother, I still want to believe he's saved. Brother David Daniels, um, I think Look What's Missing talks about the New King James Bible where they take out the word yet when Jesus said he doesn't go up to the feast yet. And by taking out the word yet, they make Jesus out to be a liar, liar because later on he goes up. Okay? And what are they doing? They're tearing Jesus down trying to make him not God. Okay. What's going on here with has come versus is come? They're trying to tear Jesus down and make him out where he's not God fully and completely. Okay, he's, he, he could see it here, but he's not seeing it here. I was just wondering if you knew about the Antichrist spirit behind saying has come in the flesh. And if you did, I'd have to ask, why are you backing a book that has an Antichrist spirit? Two valid questions. His response was, I think who's, whoever told you this made a mistake. Has come is an event which is true in the present, and I'll prove to you it's not. And I'm going to prove to you according to Scripture, not English, the ever-evolving uh, English evolution. <laughs> that he's wrong. It's not present tense in the Bible. It's never present tense. It's not has come. He corrects me on this. There is no has. The word has in the Bible. So I'm not above correction. Has come is an event which is true in the present. Look up perfect tense. See, he's telling me to look up present day English. He can't handle what the scripture says when it says is come in the flesh. All right. First of all, because he says, I don't know who... I think whoever told you this made a mistake. First, I put, first of all, God told me this, this. It's in scripture. It's supposed to be is come. And you do a word study on hath come. And you do a word study on is come. Is come is the right reading. Okay. 
less. Second, saying Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, you're presently saying he has come in the past. It's still past tense, but you're presently saying it. Okay? I've taken classes. English is always a changing language. Why I believe so you can't discredit so you why I believe so you can discredit the Bible. It's not about what's accepted today, it's about what was accepted at the time that the King James Bible was translated. Okay? Back then, how their English was. Like I said, English keeps changing today because I believe it's attacking, it's to doing that to attack the King James Bible. My final question is saying, has come in the flesh is, let's see, if saying has come in the flesh is okay, then why did the translator say has come in the flesh? Why did God choose is come in the flesh? I just had to just basically throw it in his face saying, if has come means the same thing and it's not a big deal, why did God choose is come? Okay. Now remember, has come can never be used for the future. It's not eternal in its concept. Okay. Are you saying, this is David Daniels, are you saying you have checked the King James Bible and you found that the King James never translates a perfect as has? Uh, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about elsewhere where it's translated. We're talking about in that passage, if it's, trans, if it's okay to translate it as has come, why didn't they translate it has come? He wouldn't answer that. Okay. Now, here's where I was wrong. I'm not above correction. Here's where I was wrong. Okay. Cannot find has come at all in the King James Bible. I can find is come, which is present tense. You can say it is come yesterday. You can say it today or and tomorrow. Has come is something you and only it has come is something you and only say about yesterday which is why I believe backed by scripture has come is not in there. Not the best English, but it got the point across. Okay. This is still me speaking, but you did not answer my question, brother. If has come is okay, then why did God want his word to say is come for that passage? I didn't say for that passage, but he knows that's what I'm talking about. Proverbs 35, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Is come is what you say about someone who is still alive. Has come means Jesus came in the past. When you translate God's word from English to another language, because remember, I'm doing it in the context of the Spanish Bible. I wanted the Spanish Bible, not the video that he did the teaching where he kept changing, going from is come to has come. Okay. You make, it a line, you make it line up as exactly as you can. The whole point of 1 John 4 verses 1 through 4 is to see who is of God and who is of the Antichrist and the world. It's for us to judge who's, of, who's a Christian, who's not, who's fakes and frauds. It is a warning. I pray that God will convict you on this. This is not a minor thing, and it's not. Okay, It is a serious one. Um, now, this is where this is where he corrects me, and like I said, I'm not above correction. Not has, but hath. I didn't think of that. It is hath. H a t h. Not has. The King James Bible uses the word hath, which today is considered uh, English is wrong. So he's grabbing from today's English. Yet today's English says it's wrong to say hath. There is no spelling has in the King James. Past would be. Plu perfect. Uh, I want to say plu perfect. Okay. Had come. Has come has an effect into the present. So once again, he's still defending has come being used in that passage. I mean, it's not in there, but people can say it in reference to that passage. And here's the thing, brothers and sisters of Christ, this is the thing that's always got and bothered some of us brethren that are in ministry and everything because here's his attitude you are welcome to believe what you want and yes the king james is correct god bless you if the king james bible is correct then why are you telling people that you are welcome to believe what you want 
why aren't you making a stand that has come is just could have easily have used has come as well as is come okay that's why we get upset with him because it's sometimes he just won't put his foot down he called brother james white a brother i'm sorry brother james white he called james white a brother because i was reading about that um he's not he's a servant of satan He's lost, hell-bound sinner. He attacks the King James Bible. And yet he called him a brother in Christ. Um, when he did his book about Masons, I hope I can remember the name. Um, sometimes the name, anyway. He wouldn't say that the person, they asked if um, there's a big-time preacher back then. He was friends of the Pope. He was friends of people that were rich, like evil wicked people and government officials and the biggest thing that makes him lost is he said that there are many paths to heaven and I the main just I should have wrote it down I told myself to write it down but he wouldn't stand and say hey he's a high-level Mason you don't get there without worshiping Satan and he says there's many paths to heaven he is lost he wouldn't stand there and say on oh, stand say on that radio channel that this man was lost he won't put his foot down Okay, he's always trying to be friendly and not making stands where he should be making stands. Mm -hmm. He should not have been saying, you are welcome to believe what you want. He should have been saying, hey, the way I've explained it and the way this is, is truth. And you, uh, hopefully someday you'll come to that knowledge. That should have been his response. But he's always trying to be friendly with everybody. Mm -hmm. And almost on the border of being a friend of the world. All the professing Christians out there that are lost. Okay, and this is my final response. Thank you for correction on hath versus has. I was wrong. Okay, looking into hath come, so then I looked into hath come, and we're going to go over that together. So far, you are correct. Hath come is past only sometimes, and sometimes past to present, but we're going to find out that's not true. I kind of gave in, or I was wrong again. Okay, I'll just say I was wrong, because I was. But never future. It is come is past, present, and future. And he can't seem to get this. He just can't seem to get this. Or he's purposely fighting this and going against this. Is come can be used in the... Even if you say hath come is past to present, it can never be used for future. You can't say it for using it in the future. Okay. It's always going to be past when you say it. Okay. It is not about believing what I want. I had to throw that in his face. It's not about believing what I want. It's about, it's not about feelings and opinions. I'm after absolute truth, God's truth. That's what I'm after. If I'm wrong, show me in the King James Bible. I want to know truth, okay? That's what I want to know. So that was the conversation. So bottom line, I addressed him saying with the Spanish Bible, He's all for hath come. It's present, past to present. It's okay to use has come. Now, he believes that the correct reading is is come, yet he defends hath come or has come. He's defending the new versions. And in the video that Brother Matthew, and I'll link it, uh, Landall does, he does a teaching where he keeps using both is come and hath come, and he's preaching to a congregation. Uh, people in the seats because so I can't say they're all saved they're in a Babel building okay he keeps going back and forth and using both and he's trying to justify it by saying it's not that big of a deal yes the correct reading is is come but it's okay to use hath has come to reference that and it's not and people aren't getting that in the comments section so now I'd like to go over a little bit of the comments okay and I'm going to, because I'm not keeping my mouth shut, I went to him and I made a comment. Because remember, we'll go back to this. He says, I, David W. Daniels, confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And then below there he puts, I had an unusual exchange with someone on Friday. I put the conversation here for all to see. If I did something wrong, please let someone sh show me so I can make it right. Thanks. I think he's getting too technical. He's getting too much head knowledge, and he's getting too technical. When I simply asked him, um, first I'll stop. i got to pause so I can show the pictures. So hopefully I can get all of them up here and um, 
to prove that that conversation happened on Facebook. It's not me just saying it and making up words and everything. So I'll put them up here and you can pause the video. Right? But he puts on here, I'll put the conversation here for all to see. If I did something wrong, please let me let someone show me so I can make it right. And this is what's frustrating us, brothers and sisters of Christ. He says, if I did something wrong, please let someone show me. I just showed you. I already showed him. Brother uh, Matthew Landall showed him. Other brothers in Christ have showed him, and yet he's throwing it out here like he's trying to save face. And he says, uh, if I did something wrong, please let someone show me. And you wonder why we're getting so frustrated, those who vehemently defend Chick Publications. We're getting frustrated because we have showed him. And he rejects what the Bible says. So he can use what the world says. Okay? So, um, some of the responses I wanted to read under his channel, because it's just like none of them are using Scripture, and when one does use Scripture, it's just about Satan, or he's a Pharisee. But they don't use Scripture showing that David Daniels is right and, and supporting has come in the flesh. Now, the Bible doesn't say that, but it's not that big of a deal to use has come. Okay. And he does it in his Spanish translation. Okay. And he says, What a foolish accusation. It's fitting for Satan, but incomprehensibly stupid for brethren to imitate him. Okay, This is Kim Anderson. Let it go and do as Jesus did. Say, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. If our loyalty to Jesus were dependent on producing 100% word-for-word -word quotations of the Bible, listen to what she's saying, then the kingdom would have been a contentious setback for 2,000 years. So what I'm getting from this from Kim Anderson, and maybe she doesn't know the whole story, like if she's watching this video of me showing that people have confronted him, and it's not that he doesn't say, I believe, I confess, it's that his actions say otherwise. Okay. But he, she's already saying we should doubt the word of God. Oh, no, I'm not. Yeah, you are. We're not supposed to follow this Bible word for word. And these are the type of people defending him. Next one. We know you, brother. We know you have good doctrine. Some people have nothing else better to do like soul winning that then try and point something out against you. And I've got to point this out. People have done that to me. Okay, When I correct them and show that they're not standing for this book, they're off somewhere, whether it's doctrine, whether it's instruction, righteousness, you're correcting some sin in their life. They'll, some of them will always come back with, you're just so quick to judge and, and fight people. Why aren't you out there preaching the gospel? And here's the thing. I hand out gospel tracts when I can. I have talked to people about the gospel. Okay? But they don't care about that response. Their attack to avoid dealing with the situation and what they're doing wrong is they'll come back with, they need to be out there preaching the gospel. They need to be soul winning. Okay? Yeah. I have to read this one because I like the word he used. Peter J., uh, the last one was Alicia Lil Hammett, but I'm going to link this so you can, if you want to go to it as you're listening to me speak. Um, uh, has come, dot, 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 is come, please. I have seen so many, like, it's not a big deal. I have seen so many of David Daniels' videos to know he is a bona fide Christian. When I read that, it's like, back in the past, women would only marry men that were bona fide. And that's what I remember that word from. But bona fide Christian who loves Jesus and the Word of God, and he puts a capital W on Word of God. Capital W is, is a reference to Jesus Christ, the manifest Word of God. He didn't put a lowercase w. And, is, and once again, people will attack me. Oh, it's just, that's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. Yeah, it is. Right. And is only one of the very few, here's the thing, ridiculously polite Christian. All right. I don't like most KJV only but I love David Daniels, and I keep going back to watch chick videos. 
Why does he keep going? He doesn't like KJV onlyist, as he says. I'm not a key, King James onlyist. I'm a King James Bible believer. He doesn't like you know channels like uh, let's say mine, uh, JT, uh, Brother Brian, you know probably not even Peter Ruckman, and he had his problems. But he only likes when it comes to Bible King James Bible believing. He only likes uh, David Daniels. Why? Because he's ridiculously polite Christian. I mean, you saw his response to me. You can believe what you want to believe. That's not shouldn't have been his response for someone who stands, 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 doesn't faint, doesn't falter when it comes to the Word of God. You don't say, well, you can believe what you want to believe. Okay. One, uh, what's it? So yeah, I had to read that one because it's like, it's all about him being polite. He's got to be right. His doctrines, everything. He's, and David Daniels has to be 100% right. Not because he lines up with Scripture, but because he's ridiculously polite Christian. Right. Uh, Walter Mortley says, Don't worry about those fools, brother, praying for you. He doesn't come back with Scripture proving these fools wrong or, pro or correcting David Daniels. He doesn't do either one. Right. Aaron Johan Wow, anyone who would slander and attack you like that is deceived. God bless you, dear brother, David Daniels. Now, they could be right in their statement, but they don't back it by Scripture. Everybody, that we've shown you that he's not following Scripture. And like I said, we'll get to the Bible study. I'm trying not to make this too long. Let me look. Okay, it's getting long. Um... Anyway, then you have Randy Ekman. He starts going into the church fathers and making wild claims. So you can read that if you want to. And then finally I'll read my response, okay? Because he asked, how can I make this right? David Daniels and anybody else that stands with him that says, has come is okay. They confess that Jesus is come, but says, has come is okay. David Daniels, I'm addressing you. How can you make this right? Here's how you make it right with God not man. It just seems like David Daniels, it's become a, Chick Publications become a business. It's about uh, people pleasing and everything, okay? It's not about making it right with me. Now, if you called me names, which he didn't, you saw it, he didn't call me names. He didn't offend me. He offended God by defending has come for that context of First uh, John chapter 4, okay? Uh, you have to make it right with God, not man. You need to denounce using has come in 1 John 4, 1 and 3. It is not the same as is, is come. Any other than is come in that passage is antichrist spirit. He's got to denounce it. You've got to denounce is, uh, has come or anything other than is come in that passage. You need to stand firm to say it's wrong. I was wrong to use it. I won't use has come in that passage ever again. You might slip up because sometimes we're trying to get rid of old things the way we say things. But you'll correct yourself and say it's is come and only is come. That's the proper reading. That's absolute truth. It's nothing else. Okay. He has to do that. And he has to stand by it in his teachings and in his books. Okay. In your teachings and in your books. I remember I'm addressing you, David Daniels. Um... When you slipped up, when you slipped up and used has come in place of is come for the passage, you repent of that. Correct yourself in front of the brethren as a whole and say, "Hey, I was wrong to even say has come. It's not the same thing." That's what he's got to get. You got to get over David Daniels and get past the brainwashing of the English today and get back to the King James Bible. Is come and has come are not the same thing. Right. You need to redo the Spanish translation to translate as is come. It's got to be translated as present tense, not past tense, not has come. All right. Well, it's past up to the present. No, it isn't. It's past. The moment you say it, you're not talking present tense. You're talking past tense. It might have been truth right up to a few seconds even before you say it. But the moment you say has come, it's talking about past tense. It's no longer present at all in any way, shape, or form. I was wrong when I said that. Right? That's what you need to do. 
David Daniels. I like said, I want to keep calling you a brother, but if you keep defending, changing the word of God in this passage, when you speak, maybe not in writing, but when you speak, there's something wrong there. Right? It is your actions that will back up whether you truly believe that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, not just telling people what they want to hear, not just repeating what the Bible says. I did that teaching and I had people attack me, oh, so now it's not just saying it. When you confess something, it comes from your heart and it's backed by the way you live your life and your actions. Okay? The biggest action you can do is take in that Spanish Bible, say we're not selling it until we correct it. We're going to correct this part in it and then we're going to put out the real reading, the proper reading. It's got to be present tense. Okay? And only present tense, not past at all. Present tense. Okay? True confession comes from the heart and is backed by action. That is why the Bible says we are to obey the gospel. It's not just verbal. Romans 10, 16, 2 Thessalonians 1, 8, 1 Peter 4, 17 talks about how the lost world does not obey the gospel. And that's how you can tell a false convert. They don't obey the gospel. Right? Evidence of belief is the changed life afterwards. True repentance, fruits meet for repentance, is a changed life you're born again. For Bible believers like me to believe you believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, you must denounce has come or hath come being used for and in 1 John 4, 1 and 3. Entirely, completely, and fully. You need to denounce it. You need to stop using it. You need to get it out of your vocabulary when it comes to 1 John chapter 4 completely out of your vocabulary. You need to be against it, vehemently against it. All right. Now, I pray that you do this, David. Get your heart back to being right with God in this matter. Okay? You don't take one thing and then just make everything he does and teaches wrong. Okay? This is very important. It is so important. The Bible talks about the great falling away. All right. So I did make a comment on there. I'm not just making this video. I made the comment on there. Okay. That's what David Daniel, that's what you got to do. Everybody else out there that says they believe that the King James Bible is the correct reading, but in word, like talking, you change it a lot to has come or was come or whatever, anything other than is come, that's what you got to do. You got to repent. You got to stand firm and vehemently against even just talking about it in, in the Bible study, going back and forth between the two. It is very wrong. It's very offensive to God. And after this, if David Daniels completely stands for it, then he's offended me too. Because he's out there trying to claim to be a Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian man, and yet he's making us who truly stand for the Word of God look bad. And like I said, I'm doing this out of love. I've got some of his books, and I believe they're absolute truth, okay? But when it comes to this matter, it just seems like it's not just this matter. He slowly, over time, has slowly drifted away in certain areas from the King James Bible. Graven images. His gospel tracts are not standing firm to repentance, that you're a dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner on your way to hell, and you deserve to go to hell for sinning against God. But here's the thing. You don't have to go to hell. God has made a way for you to go to heaven. And that's through his son, Jesus Christ. The blood that was shed on the cross was shed to pay for the sins of the world. You want your sins forgiven? You want to go to heaven? You don't want to go to hell? You need to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, that he died for you, and three days later that he rose from the grave. Okay? That's the gospel. You need to repent for, uh, for, 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 you need to repent, believe, confess both in prayer, and then ask God to save you. And you need to be direct about it. Okay? But he started getting away from the true repentance and just started promoting easy believism. Okay? He's been confronted on this. Now he's getting away from the Bible by saying, well, you can preach it as this way. Even though the Bible says this, you can say has come. What are you doing when you do that, David? You're correcting the word of God. It says is come, but we can say has come. It means the same thing. God might have made a mistake by saying is come. 
that's what you're showing all these lost world and it's professing Christians that we know aren't saved out there. They're into the Bible perversions and everything. Well, if you're going to keep preaching has come along with is come, then on my Bible version is not a big deal. It says has come. So, let's get to the Bible study part. <laughs> We're at 45 minutes. Okay. Let's get to the Bible study part. I went uh, First, I went and wanted to do is come, but there's tons of verses that does is come. So I'm going to motivate you, brothers and sisters of Christ, to do a word study on the exact phrase, is come. Okay? And you'll find throughout the whole Bible, is come is present tense. There's some in there I was reading that's like, it kind of sounds like past tense, or it kind of sounds like future tense. But it's talking about in that moment, in the future when this happens, in that moment it becomes present tense, which is why it says, is come. All throughout the whole, in context, throughout the whole Bible, is come is always present tense. Okay? If you disagree, throw some verses and we'll talk about it underneath this video. Okay? I am not above correction. If you want to fight that is come can be used in, as past tense and is come can be used as future tense, then it doesn't change our stand. Is come can still be used regardless to talk about the past present and future. When you're in the past, it's present. When you're in the future, it's present. Right now, it's present. Okay? It still can be used for an eternal being to say Jesus Christ is eternal. He was there from the very beginning. He is God fully and completely. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about hath come in the Bible to show that it's always past tense, never past tense to present. It's always past tense. You compare scripture with scripture. What does King James Bible say hath come means? Not what the world says, not what, what David Daniels was trying to say, prefect or whatever that is. What does the Bible say? Okay. So if you want to turn to 1 Samuel 6, I'm going to read from here because we're getting, uh, it's getting long. But make sure you have your King James Bibles out, brothers and sisters of Christ. Please follow along. Okay. I'm slow, so sometimes I will follow along in the Bible because it's going to be a short video, but sometimes when it becomes a long video, because I love Scripture and I love using lots of Scripture, you can pause the video, turn, and then follow along. Please follow along in King James Bible. So 1 Samuel 6, 7. Now therefore make a new cart and take two milch kind on which ha there hath come no yoke. And tie the kind to the cart and bring their calves home from them. Okay? Hath come is past tense. Well, they're saying, well, it's past tense to present tense. Well, you can look at the cattle present tense and see that they don't have a yoke on them. They don't have a yoke on them right now. But has a yoke ever come upon them in the past? It's still past tense. Hath come no yoke. You start in the present before, not like just before the present, and you go back in the past and say, okay, here's some, uh, I want to use the word that this uses, two milch kind. You find two milch kind, they have no yoke on them. That's present tense. But has it always been that way? So hath come here is past tense. It's not past, I was almost going to say past to present, but it isn't. It's past all the way up to just before you looked at them and found them. You already know they don't have yokes on them, but in the past have they have yo had a yoke on them. All right? If you want to turn to 2 Corinthians 8.11, want to, please turn to 2 Corinthians 8.11. All right? And Solomon brought up the daughter of Pharaoh out of the city of David unto the house that he had built for her. He, for he said, My wife shall not dwell in the house of David, king of Israel, because the place... Because the places are holy, whereunto the ark of the Lord hath come. Okay? The moment the ark of the Lord was there, it became holy. It's talking about past tense, hath come. It's not hath coming, it's not the ark's not there and it's coming again. No, it already has been there. All these places that it's been, those places are holy. Okay? It's past tense. Now turn to Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 32. Now therefore, our God, the great, the mighty, and the terrible God, who keep his covenant and mercy, let not all the trouble seem little before thee, that hath come upon us, on our kings, 
on our princes, on our priests, on our prophets, and on our fathers, and on all thy people since the time of the kings of Assyria unto this day. Okay? Hath come there, notice it how it has to say, unto this day. If hath come means past to present, why did it have to say unto this day? Okay? Hath come is past tense only. It started here and all through this time period that's past tense. Then it has to say, oh, also unto this day. It's still going on. But hath come is past tense. It's not past tense to present, and it hasn't been future tense at all. Okay? And people will avoid that when you say, hey, what about future tense? How can you use hath come or has come in future tense? You can't. And that's where they just can't deal with is come. Jeremiah 25, 3. If you want to turn to Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 3. From the 13th year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, has to say it again, even unto this day, that, it, that is in the 3 and 20th year, the word of the Lord hath come unto me. Now, People say, well, it's said unto this day. See, the past to the present. Well, let's keep reading. And I have spoken unto you, that's past tense, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. The word of the Lord hath come unto me. That's past tense. The word of the Lord came unto him, and he's been preaching to these people, and they wouldn't listen. It's not past tense to present tense, okay? That's talking about him before he starts preaching the word of God to the people. So it came to him first, past tense, and he preached it to the people, and they wouldn't listen. Okay. Now turn to Ezekiel 18.6. The last time hath come has been used in the Bible. So it hasn't been used a lot. Is come has been used a lot. But hath come hasn't. Okay. One, two, three... Four or five times. So Ezekiel 18.6. And hath not eaten upon the Sid mountains, neither hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife, neither hath come near to a menstruous woman. Okay. When you walk up to somebody and you're asking them, I know you wouldn't ask them this, but... Uh, Hath come, have you come near, uh, hath come, because that's what you want to say. You walk up to them and say, have you ever come near to a menstruous woman? You already know they haven't present tense, but you're walking up to them asking them. So you're asking them past tense to find out if they hath come near to a menstruous woman. Okay? But once again, that's past tense. It's not present tense. So David Daniels argument that has come is past tense up to present tense. Remember, has isn't in the King James Bible. It uses the word hath. So hath come in the Bible, because this is our final authority, not the world, not what man says English is supposed to be. It's what God's word is today. I mean, when it was translated, what we have today in the King James Bible. Hath come has never been present tense. It's never been past tense up to present tense. It's always past tense. So I'm going to go off the Bible, and the Bible definition of hath come is always past tense. Something that's come in the past. Okay. Now, let's get to some of the comments real quick that they were making under Brother Brian's videos. Okay, here's the comments. One of them was, this, was made flesh. That's past tense, and it is. Okay. John 1.14, if you want to turn to John, I want to, please turn to John 1.14. See, i got to get things out of my vocabulary. John 1.14, turn there, please. In the King James Bible. And the Word was made flesh. And people like to stop there. See, that's past tense. Does that mean Jesus isn't God and He isn't eternal? Keep reading. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory for the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. That means drive from, born of, drive from. God manifest in the flesh. Full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. 
He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now, if you remember the previous study I just did, it talks about how John the Baptist was the only one that saw the Holy Ghost descending like as a dove on Jesus Christ. It was a sign for him, and that's why he's crying this. This is the Son of God. This is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Okay? It was a sign for him. But the key word there is dwelt among us. Why is that? If you turn to Romans 8, 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. So when it says the word there in John 1, 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. When did Jesus, the capital W word, the manifest word, dwell among us? people when he came in the likeness of sinful flesh okay that's what the word was made flesh when jesus was born turn to matthew chapter 1 verse 23 when jesus was born because that's the past tense there word was made flesh and dwelt among us that's present tense for john now matthew chapter 1 verse 23 Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Yes, that word was made flesh is past tense, but it's talking about the likeness of sinful flesh. Okay? It's not talking, it's not in context there, it's not talking about Jesus being an eternal being, and nor is it saying he's not. God fully and completely internal. It's talking about that 33 years plus, give or take a few months, that Jesus was on the earth in the likeness of sinful flesh, dwelling among the, us. And I say us, but I'm saying it as if I'm reading this and you're there at that time period. Okay? So that hopefully explains that. It has nothing to do with the context of 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, I think it is. They try to use, people are trying to use this to attack that. This is talking about likeness of sinful flesh. The uh, 1 John chapter uh, 4, verse 1, 1, verse 1 through 4 is talking about all eternity. It's talking about that time period. It's talking about the past. It's talking about out into the future. Period. It's basically saying that Jesus is God fully and completely. The Godhead. If you believe the Trinity, you deny Jesus Christ being God fully and completely. And those people who deny that are of the Antichrist spirit. That's basically what's going on there. Why is it so hard for people to get that? David Daniels, why is it so hard for you to get that? Has come is satanic in that passage. There's nothing wrong with hath come, has come, uh, using those words in the Bible because they're in the Bible. But in that passage... It's saying it's satanic to use those words. You're of the Antichrist. Okay? Anything other than is come. Another one that they'll run to was was manifest in the flesh. Okay? Say, so see, past tense. And you're right. It is past tense. But let's read it. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Okay, great is the mystery of godliness. What is it talking about when God was manifest in the flesh? Justified in the Spirit, Holy Spirit came down, John saw it. This is the Son of God. He was healing people. Okay, uh, seen of angels. Okay, he went up. Received up into glory. That's after the believed on in the world. Okay? But the key there is God was manifest in the flesh. And they grab that and say, see, past tense. It's saying that Jesus isn't God. Well, that's kind of dumb to use that. Because it says God was manifest in the flesh. But what flesh is it talking about? You don't have to turn back there. But we can go back to Romans 8.3. It's talking about the likeness of sinful flesh. And it's a mystery how God of the universe could come... In a corruptible body and the likeness of sinful flesh. How God of the universe could come down and die on a cross 
to pay for the sins of the world. Remember uh, Romans 8.3, it says, uh, and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. Because he came in the likeness of sinful flesh, a corruptible body, he was able to take on the sins of the world. He never sinned once. Okay? That's what that's talking about. God was manifest in the flesh that 33 and a half year period. Okay? And it's not denouncing that Jesus isn't God fully and completely because it says he's calling Jesus God. So this is even calling him capital G God. 1 Corinthians 8, uh, chapter 8, verse 6. There is but one capital G God, the Father. It's calling Jesus God. Okay? But people will still cut, grasp at straws, grasp at straws to try to get rid of is come or say it's okay to say is come and has come. It's not. Okay? Romans chapter 1, verse 3. Okay. Concerning, in case somebody ever brings this one up, brothers and sisters in Christ. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Okay. What's the flesh it's talking about? Well, it says right there, the seed of David. What flesh did David have? He had corruptible flesh. Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh. That's what the flesh that was made there. Jesus himself wasn't made. He had an incorruptible body in the Old Testament, angel of the Lord. He's got an incorruptible body throughout all of eternity. But this is talking about the time period where he came in likeness of sinful flesh. Okay. Now, and I'm going to leave you with this, because we've got to wrap this up. Galatians chapter 4, verse 29. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuteth him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Notice what it says. But as then he that was born after the flesh, now I know this probably has another context, but for us, I'm using this to show that there's people like, like me, I'm not saying I do it, but people that are in likeness of sinful flesh, that are born after the flesh. Remember we read in Romans about how when you're born again, you walk after the Spirit. You're spiritually minded and you walk after the Spirit. You have lost people out there that are carnally minded. They're walking after the flesh. Um, and they're persecuting Jesus Christ, who's born after the Spirit. He never sinned. Okay? They will attack us and attack us, brothers and sisters in Christ. Those of us who stand for the Word of God and stand for Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And we do it by the life we live and by our stands. Anybody tries to say has, we correct them. They refuse to correct it, we rebuke them. Some people use the word attack. We rebuke. Okay? That's what the Bible commands us to do. So, just to help out, because some of the brethren weren't using it to attack that of uh, these verses to attack 1 John uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, they were just throwing it out there saying, hey, I don't, I, how do I reconcile the two? One minute it's saying has come in the flesh. One minute, not as has, it's saying was made flesh, was manifest in the flesh. And then over here it's saying is. The is one, is come in the flesh, is talking about Jesus being God fully and completely. And the people who deny that, they're not of God. Okay? Here it's talking about the time period where Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh. So I hope that helps, brothers and sisters in Christ. So we're going to end this here. So loving rebuke, uh, loving correction at this point. And, and I did one, and a lot of other brothers did. So kind of a rebuke to, to you, David Daniels, and all those who stand for it. It's okay to use either or. Um, you need to get this worked out with the Lord. You need to stand for is come in the flesh. And you need to get has come or any other phrases out of your vocabulary when it comes to that passage. You need to stand for absolute truth. So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. All of you. And uh, my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. All of you as safe sinners. Mm -hmm. You want grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ? Get saved. Okay? Repent, for, uh, repent, believe, confess both in prayer, and ask God to save you. Thank you for watching.